Introducing Sheep Goes to Space by Jay Clover. And so far, it's a sheep. Uh, I can see the sheep is probably in the suit. Really hard to make out the suit with the gray outline surrounding the head. L a little bit transparent too. Yeah, I hope that's a suit. This was released August 26th, 2012. And there is a very sparse description here. Sheep is tired of his sheep life and wants to go to space to get some peace and quiet. Made in six or seven hours. Made for Ludum Dare Evolution Contest. I don't know what the evolution means here. But I do know that there's a lot of these dares that are, of course, daring devs to make games real quick. And that's pretty much how Minecraft came to be, if I recall correctly. Controls are arrow keys, so no other buttons. And this is for all ages. I'm tired. I desire peace and quiet. So I shall go to space. the grand opening yeah here we go yeah we're about we're about to be the first person with lambskin to ever go to space yeah we got a rainbow laser and look at me just wait there and look at the parallax don't quote me if that's a parallax and look at my fridge I got enough food, got the oven, stove. And I, the ship looks like a cigarette. With the, uh, the one tip ablaze. Elevator music. Lounge, smooth jazz, down tempo by Thievery Corporation. Yellow. Oh, okay, four million years later. Sheep of Oh, this is the uh, evolve part of that there, isn't it? So this is what Space Odyssey, or is this Watchmen? Um, success. The end. By J. So the only button that works is Escape, and maybe surprisingly, I expected this. I just didn't know when it was gonna happen. I knew that Jake had a point where the games started to become more of just like film, I guess, so to speak, and not actual games in the traditional way. Which brings up the question, is this even a game? Because I don't know, are visual novels games? One may suppose that the actual part of a game that defines the the medium is the ability to make mistakes. And I don't really know what mistake I could I could possibly make there. So this game, for whatever reason, maybe because it was a part of this uh, dare contest, has 20,000 views, 86 likes. This is a magnitude larger than the games that came before this. And as I said, maybe this is like a little bit of a turning point. And maybe it was a turning point in terms of exposure too. This is where it becomes like an art form. Okay, there are 66 comments, and I do not think I'll be able to get through all this. And yeah, Shank McShiv here says, of all the games you've made, this little thing reaches page two of the top rated page. And yeah, he's just 
completely correct. I clearly it's like a cute little film, but it's not really maybe like a game design masterpiece. More so, um, a, a bit subversive of your expectations. Yeah, more games like this. I mean, again, you know, is this really a game? I guess there's a degree of interactivity, but brilliant, short but awesome, charming. See this guy again? We just agree. Has its charm. Love the art. Love the story. I don't even know how you can make a video on this. I, I don't even think, I don't know what I'm going to do with this video. I was like prepared to bring out my iconic, my iconic novellas out from under the TV where I bury my other treasure right next to all the gold that I usually keep as, as my own personal hoard. So I don't have to store it in a bank and I can't even use them. I liked it because of the sheep. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so it's kind of the only... <laughs> It's the only main character, I mean. I, I just gotta be honest with Alice. Again, let's play here, but... Another video. How do you... How... What are you guys gonna do with the video? I, I don't even know. I'm, again, I don't even know what I'm gonna do with the video here. This Do I cut the video? If I just post the... Sheep 15. If I just post the video, I... What would I even edit? Like, I, I don't know. I see most people just want to see the story. I my, I would even consider taking out my commentary because my commentary was horrible. Just did not exist. I even have to go through all these comments, highlight the best one because there's so many. But I mean, I, you know, suffering from success, right? It's it's not all about me. And, and I'm so vain. I'm so selfish to think that way. It is my fault. It is a it is as the exact choreography that Jake Lover had masterminded 10 years ago to remind us, okay? Not every game has to be traditional and commentary doesn't always have to be what we expect out of the, the well, as some may put it, the art form or simply the medium, the format. Maybe, maybe I was the sheep. Maybe... Maybe I should learn how to break away. So bringing, bringing it, well, I messed that up. Bringing it back, bringing it back to routine here is Jelly Gal. Nice short game. It's really not much of a game, more of an entertaining experience. See, the, now we're in agreement. Now the stars have aligned. If, if you catch the wordplay I'm making, worth a play. If you want to see something cute that lasts one or two minutes, also Half-Life sound effects. Yes, like very iconic. I think I caught the sound effects, but I probably did not. That's really going to bite me when I discuss the sound effects of this quote-unquote game. More Let's Plays. Again, I, I, don't, I have no idea. Like, I'm going to click on this vid, right? Metaphorically, not literally, because I don't want to steal their content or put other uh, unauthorized content on the video. But it's like, what do I even, <laughs> what do you even comment on? I mean, I, that's my problem. That's my, it's my um, weakness, right? That I don't have anything to, to advance the, the story on. And simply, I guess this, um, what I'm doing here instead is reflecting on what I could do better as a, as a person who's trying to highlight these games. And speaking of uh, highlights of ratings for the games, that's my segue. This is another one out of five on Glitch Wave. And the same three people who play these games, 4.5 out of 10, 4 out of 10, 1 out of 10. Once again, this person, Shandine Mandine, the same person who submitted it. So once again, it's out of love. All right, this person's doing it because they love this dude. All right, you're, you're going to see. We're going to see the turnaround. The actual true turning point, okay? This was the art game turning point. The walking simulator. But soon enough, you're, we're going to see an actual cinematic masterpiece. And I, I guess I review this. Man, it's like reviewing a film. I don't know how to review a film. For mechanics, there's walking. For resource management, like basically none. Is it fun? If you like films, I think this is a uh, fun. I think one possible problem is if you went through all the effort to download this and you felt that you were not rewarded for downloading it. Graphics. I briefly mentioned this. I think the graphics definitely illustrate the objects and persons that 
that Jake wanted to illuminate, but I also do think it, it's a little bit hard to make out the 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 spacesuit and the cane. For the soundtrack, I would say the song is something like Lounger Down Tempo that Thievery Corporation or early Jagged Jazzist might make without all the complex without all the complex jazz parts. Because really, Jagged Jazzist doesn't really sound like complex jazz, but they have a lot of instrumentation going on, a lot of outside influences on occasion. They're definitely one of the earliest new jazz bands ever. Not that there are many new jazz bands, but despite that, I, there is some sort of complexity to their music. It's not quite punk rock. So for the sound design, the spaceship blasts off, and I just realized I forgot to discuss the other accompanying elements for the graphics, ease of use and appearance. Ease of use? Yeah, you pretty much use arrow keys, very easy. Uh, as long as you can push an arrow key, you should be able to progress the game very easily. You don't really need any sort of precision. It's not a, it's not a platformer. As for the appearance, I'd say, I'd say almost everything fits. I'm starting to forget what I mean by appearance ever since I created this review template. But I think what I mean is you can make out everything that is on screen and then, then that you can piece together the theme. So as I've mentioned, the, the spacesuit and the cane are a little bit hard to make out. Maybe the chair at the end too is a little bit hard to make out. Like I kind of said as a joke, the spaceship is a cigarette and that might be funny, but it also kind of illustrates how simple the spaceship is that if you didn't have the context for blasting off, you might think, oh, what is that? Like a like a kind of floating cigarette perhaps? I don't know, is this, is this one word? Google's not gonna tell me if spaceship is a single word. Story and writing. For the story, the sheep hates Earth, reads Andy Milanakis' tweet about how astronauts are picking a great time to leave Earth, one of the most liked tweets in history, and goes to another planet four million years away. I mean, there's more of a story here than the other some of the other Jake Clover games. Yeah, yeah, I I do admit if I had a hat, I would take it off and throw it at a guillotine. Because that's like that's a that's a positive thing. I don't know if anyone's ever heard that phrase. Is it repetitive? Absolutely not, unless you somehow convince yourself to play this game for 20 minutes, or you just like, for for five minutes, you admire the first environment, and that's all you do. You're like just standing still, basically looking at it. You take another five minutes to get into the ship, another five minutes to blast off and to use the control panel in the ship, and then another five minutes again to the chair. Right, you know what I'm saying. And I'm even being repetitive saying that. I'm more repetitive than the game with that description than the game itself. Where does it stand in the wider scheme of all things gamer? Where does it stand in the wider scheme of all things gamer? Where does it stand? It's an art game, which uh, depending on who you are, you might think that's derogatory. Like for me personally, like, Disco Elysium might be an art game. Outer Wilds might be an art game. Actual art critic. It's all so shit. Conceptualization check, right? I don't know if there's anything else to say. I could just like keep listing art games. Does Umi Neko count as an art game? Maybe, maybe not. Because it, apparently it's a novel, right? I actually haven't played it. So I'm just talking. I'm just like grabbing whatever is in the nether regions of my mind. Maybe in some way Planescape Torment is an art game with the amount of of reading you have to do for that. With that said, this is actually self-aware and has a comedic angle to it. Uh, I don't I don't mean to think that this game is I don't mean to imply that this game is break how do I put it? I don't mean to imply that this game has an ego attached to it. This game knows that it's not breaking boundaries. It was simply a game that was made briefly as part of a dare and meant to to at least have a sense of humor attached to it. It knows that it's not this masterpiece that came out of, that's like a Jidai Geki up there with, oh, I can't think of Jidai Gekis right now. It's not a spaghetti Western up there with the good and bad and the ugly. It knows that it's really just a sheep takes a ship, goes somewhere else and that there's a chair and it sits on it after four million years.
Where does it stand amongst the work of the developer? I would say this is the absolute turning point. Assuming I am not missing any other pieces of work by Jake out there, maybe it's not posted on Game Jolt, which of course is a weakness of my research, but putting that aside, this is the absolute turning point going from quick and simple games to art games, to games that perhaps are trying to elevate the the art form a little bit, not the art form, that are uh, trying to convey a message by subverting the idea of, of controlling the main character or protagonist. Kind of like, now I finally have a game that came to mind, kind of like Stanley Parable. In Stanley Parable, there aren't any sort of meticulous mechanics that the player has under their their control but rather they are simply just walking and listening to the narrator riff off of the riff off of the system that the game is built on and also the sort of postmodern angle to it which m makes me realize Stanley Parable should probably go up there with the all things gamer I have a a list here of other games that I think would fit a list on Glitchwave says here top narrative exploration games of all time so we got the top one is outer wilds the yume tuki yume niki dot flow so th literally like three earthbound fan games great the beginner's guide which is stanley parable related what remains of edith edith finch i i think i know what that is right it's like the family right anatomy noctis no one's probably ever heard of those two LSD, I thought that was just simply a substance that you take for a simple, you know, sort of experience. And the Stanley Parable. And, you know, reminder, this Stanley Parable is in number 10, but it might be different if the Deluxe Edition was separate because the Deluxe Edition is a part of this entry. Is that fair? I don't know. That's just how it is. But the Beginner's Guide's up there. Now, of course, Yume Niki doesn't have too many mechanics in it. It does have a few items you can use. But for the most part, you're just walking. And for some people, they may argue it's basically an unfinished game. Dot Flow is the same thing. I think you made Tuki. I believe is how you say it. Is also the same thing. You're just walking. Beginner's Guide, yeah, you're just walking. You're listening to the narrator. I think same thing for Edith Finch. And again, I, I've not played Anatomy or Noctis or LSD. And I just I did mention Stanley Parable. So Outer Wilds, of course, has way more mechanics than like any of these games. Look at look at all these genres, right? It's clearly not simply just narrative exploration, but that is kind of the core of it, without going into too much about that game. And I think ultimately this is what I was trying to get at. Sheep Goes to Space is the I say art game derogatory in parentheses. I'm just playing, but I say art game, but what I really mean is narrative exploration. See, I, I learned something. I learned what this genre is called. I should have known this the entire time. So perhaps not surprisingly, this was really short. I don't have anything else to really contribute. And honestly, I apologize that my commentary was not really in full form, form or force uh, this time around. And maybe in a way that's good because I meant the game could speak for itself, but it's on my on my part, it's bad because I know I can do better. I know I can actually put in more uh, substance into expanding the game's universe myself. You know, the game is a is a canvas and I am meant to get more than just the image in front of me with the uh, that's on the canvas. I can expand the canvas, make it a mural, you know, like in like Reddit art place slash 2020 three or 17 if you prefer that one i don't know how many people is there anyone who prefers 2017 probably place over 2022 i don't know i'd like to see the stats but that's that's a really that's a really strange stat to even be able to measure oh oh and one last thing this was by far the quietest game uh, out of like all the other games maybe because i actually had the volume turned down a little bit more than usual, but most Jake games, I have to turn my volume down to 10 on the system volume slider, but not this one. This one should have been turned down to maybe 20 or 30. Yeah, just a just a note. Oh, oh, and another note, this game did not appear in full screen. I had to use borderless gaming to force it into full screen, borderless windowed 
more so or borderless for yeah borderless window yeah borderless one yeah anyway uh video games ggs ggs I, I, again that was me 